Thoughts on the XQC? Whoa, we're not there either. I regret not being around to give to give the same takes on this, because I'm the only person capable of doing it, apparently. No offense to XQC, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, I, no, I'm not even offense to XQC. He's trying to, like, debate every in the world. Um, here is, like, the number one thing I will say. Please, please, if you are a streamer, please, stop pretending you give a fuck about gambling. Please. The virtue signaling is so fucking cringe. When these streamers are like, oh, I don't... Like, me personally, I don't like gambling that much. I'm not going to promote gambling to my viewers. I'm not going to do gambling sponsorship unless you bring me a lot of money for it. Except for like poker. I like poker, right? Personally, I don't really like gambling that much. I don't think it's a good thing to push onto people. I think it's one of the most destructive addictions that exists. So I won't do it. That's about the extent to how I'll engage with it though. But these people that are like, oh, it's so horrible. Bro, if and Kick didn't have like steak as one of their big baggers. You wouldn't give a fuck about any of this. Shit. You didn't give a fuck when Amazon signed that big deal with uh, DraftKings or whatever. You didn't give a fuck when Twitch, uh, when Amazon said that Twitch was TwitchCon was going to be in fucking Las Vegas. Like you didn't like nobody actually gives a fuck about any of this. Nobody really cares. It's just a big fucking vector to attack Kick through. And if you want to shoot a kick or whatever, that's fine. If you want to actually see and train, <laughs> go for it. Or me, yeah, knock some out. But like the the virtue signaling around the gamble shit is so fucking cringe. So Pokey's position wasn't all that bad then because she wasn't criticizing gambling, but she said it was against her moral. Um, I'd have to go back and look at her clips, but I think that Pokey and Osana are doing a lot of virtue signal around the topic based on the little bit that I saw, but I would have to go back and watch specifically. I seem to consider Kick to be far enough removed from a Gamba sponsorship then. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you, you can stream and watch my shit and everything and every other streamers that are ever doing Gamba. If you want to, this is something that I realized in the past when I tried to have arguments with it. If you want to start getting into like second and third order support for whether or not you should cut ties with a company, it's essentially impossible to do that. Like, and for as much as, especially like, I don't want to know son because he said, he actually gave me credit for helping him with the stream stuff, <laughs> which is a big step in the right direction. Um, but like for as much as certain streamers give Amazon shit for being literally fucking Hitler, it's kind of funny to do a platform that is wholly and completely subsidized, not only by Amazon, but directly, directly by Amazon Prime. You literally get money for people paying Amazon Prime right on your stream to, to be in that position. And then to be like, oh my God, kick is so evil because it's like, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's silly. Like I said, when you start, that's like people that want to like, um, boycott like Chick-fil-A because the CEO donates to an organization that doesn't like gay people or you want to like, once you start getting into, um, once you start getting into this territory, I just think it's really hairy. Sure, but Kick's connection to gambling is really close. I assume you agree that the only way Kick will ever make money is through stake advertising. Um, I don't know how Kick will make money. I'm not sure. Um, from the talks I've had with Eddie, he seems like they want to make gaming the priority in the platform and they want to make money that way. I don't know if they could do that or not. Twitch doesn't make money. Um, who knows? We'll see what happens, but. <clears throat> they think when people are addicted to offshore gambling versus Twitch gambling, it's worse. Yeah, but like, so that's another thing too. And again, this it's also annoying, especially somebody that worked at a casino a lot. And I understand gambling and I know all the gambling pitfalls. That's also something that's really annoying is when people like i think i saw i don't want to ascribe this to certain streamers but i see pop up on lsf comments so much i know certain streamers have said this people that say i don't like steak because of like crypto or it's offshore versus twitch is like highly regulated if you have a principled position against gambling personally i don't like gambling that much it should be because gambling addictions are one of the most addicting addictions in the world. It's like one of the most destructive addictions in the world. Um, that is an insanely difficult thing to deal with. But that doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's regulated or unregulated. Like I watched people destroy their lives on, on a brick and mortar casino who probably should have been kicked out before they were, even though Harris had policies at the time to kick out self-destructive gamblers. Um, I saw so many stories like that. I remember there was an old lady that used to steal food from the buffet and then she'd come over to the cafe. She would sit down this is a lady who is supposedly a multimillionaire. She was a seven-star customer back at the time, whatever the highest rating was. I don't know what they call it now. But she would go to the um, buffet. She would go in and out over the course of eight hours. She'd steal a ton of food. She would come over to the cafe. She'd order a break, an uh, egg and toast breakfast, two egg breakfast, eggs, toast, bacon. And she would ask for like, she'd keep coming over to the counter. She'd ask for like tons of to-go boxes. And then eventually what we found out was she would, she would take all the to-go boxes. She'd put them in bags. So she'd have like three bags of like nine to-go boxes. She'd go over to the buffet, open the box, and she'd start shoveling food into the boxes. And the reason why is because she was gambling so much money she couldn't afford to feed her or her family. So she would just steal food from the buffet to do it. Um, dude, I saw shit like this all the time. The idea that um, 
Yeah, so if you want to push back against like gambling and that's fine, but don't sit here and pretend like there's this huge difference between like crypto gambling and more regulated gambling. Like all of it can be highly addictive. Pretty sure USA versions of online casinos have significant limits on the amount you can gamble per day. Oh, is that true? Because I've never seen that in my life. When I played Poker Stars, I don't know if there was a daily limit that you could gamble. Is that is that maybe maybe there are some with daily limits? But I mean, I'm pretty sure even so, I'm pretty sure with those daily limits you could hit it. But and then now and then I see somebody else said this in chat. Somebody in chat was saying that it's about kids getting addicted. In my personal opinion, in my personal opinion, if you want to stop kids from getting addicted to gambling. What you need to fight 100% against is probably the concept of loot boxes. So CSGO skins, opening random containers, basically there's a, there's, a, there's a behavioral psych pattern that has to do with opening a certain number of things and getting rewarded after a certain number of hits. That's the behavioral psych learned behavior pattern. Um, there's four of them that I remember learning about. That's the one that destroys your mind, right? It's either a, um, it's either it's being rewarded after a set number of hits or a random number of hits. And then it's if you get rewarded for a set amount of time or a random amount of time after. And the one where you get rewarded after a set number of hits, um, that, that's like the, the most mind melting fucking reward pattern. And that's what happens when you get loot boxes. It's what happens when you buy trading cards. It's what happens when you do like all of those things have that fucking hearthstone. Like those are things that, uh, in my opinion, encourage gambling. Now. You could argue that gambling might be more addictive maybe because there is a, um, you can argue that gambling might be more addictive maybe because there's a monetary aspect to it. However, and I, I, I don't wanna extrapolate to everybody, okay? Um, however, when I would watch streamers do card pack openings, a lot of the, oh, it's called variable ratio reinforcement. I think that is true, yes. Um, yeah, because you've got variable ratio and you've got fixed ratio. Fixed ratio habits are incredibly easy to beat um, because fixed ratio, after you don't get it after the fixed ratio, you quit after like two or three times. But I wanna say with the variable ratio, you can get, I remember in psych, we learned this, you can get a bird to peck like 5,000 times over um, on a variable reinforcement ratio schedule once you've stopped rewarding them. It's insane. Um, but, um, oh, I was gonna say, when I would watch old Hearthstone people open, packs, the behavior is eerily similar from, uh, the behavior is eerily similar to a gambler behavior. Uh, so here, let me, and actually I'll give, here's like life advice if you don't realize this. And I implore you to, I implore you, I implore you, I implore you to think about this a lot um, if you have these types of habits. If you find yourself engaging in gambling behavior, like opening packs or straight up gambling, if you're feeling bad after doing it, that's a huge, huge, huge sign that you need to stop. You should never feel bad after gambling. Um, you should always have fun with the game you're playing. And if you lose, you gotta lose and it's whatever. But if you actually feel like a little bit bad or depressed, and I would see this happen with certain streamers, but after you'd open the last pack of cards, it's like, oh, I didn't get it. If you have these feelings where you're looking back and you spent X amount of dollars and you didn't get what you want, and then you feel really bad after your rolls, that's one huge, really big mind thing number one and number two is if you set aside money to spend on a certain thing and I some people do this too you buy a hundred dollars worth of packs or whatever you open it if you don't get what you want and then after that you're like ah, f it. we're gonna do another hundred dollars let's do one hundred dollars more and let's go that is also a really 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 bad these are like two things where when I see people engage in like either of these behaviors it's it is always like ultimately mentally destructive there's always gonna be bad shit um, not good, not good, not good. Be very, very, very careful for that.